Well, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Claire, and I'm uh, speaking to you this morning from the British Nutrition Foundation. And we're going to have a short assembly now, about 15 minutes, to talk a bit more about Healthy Eating Week. Um, and I'd like to say thank you to all the schools and the classes who've already introduced themselves in the chat box. That's brilliant. I can see we've got schools from um, Wales, Scotland, and England at the moment. I don't know if we have anyone from Northern Ireland joining us. And I can see some of those lovely class names um, that I love. So I can see some names, some classes are named after birds um, and things like that. So it's there's still time to say hello in the chat box if you'd like to. Um, and while you're doing that, we're going to start getting on with our assembly. So happy healthy eating week. Um, it's here at last. I've been so excited about this for such a long time, but it's now here. So our theme this year is eat well for you and the planet. So while I'm with you this morning, just for about 15 minutes, we're gonna, we're gonna think a little bit more about what eat well for you and the planet actually means, um, why this might be important and what we can actually do, what we can all do. So, thank you, more people introduce themselves there, that's excellent. Right, so eat well for you and the planet. So it's really important the foods and drinks that we choose are important for keeping us healthy, but also keeping our planet healthy. Now you can see I've got some, I chose a picture there of some healthy, what I thought looked like healthy children jumping around. And I don't know if anybody, the little, little boy who's a silhouette on the left there, I wonder if anybody knows anybody in their class or their school that stands in that kind of position. Because as soon as I saw that silhouette, I thought I know lots of, boys in primary schools who stand like that and do that pose. Um, so yeah, so we're thinking about our health and we're thinking about the health of the planet. So a lot goes into producing our food. So we're used to going to the supermarket or shops perhaps or markets, we see lots of food all available for us. Um, but it doesn't just doesn't just get there by magic. A lot goes into producing that food, making it ready and uh, getting it to us. And I'll just do a quick hello to a couple more schools. So we've got um, schools in Suffolk and in Leighton Buzzard and another school from South Wales joining us. So good morning to you and Boradar to our schools in Wales. Uh, so we're just talking about the food, uh, what goes into producing our food. So producing our food, we need land, water and energy. So that's quite interesting, isn't it, to think about what that means. So here is a nice loaf of bread. And I wonder if you can think, how would land, water and energy be used to make this loaf of bread? So can you, if anybody will, really can get into the chat box really quickly, perhaps you can tell me how, how you think one of those things, land, water, energy, has been used to make this loaf of bread. Just going to give you a few moments to give me an example if anyone can how would, how would land be used to make this bread about water or energy right maple class good fast typing there well done so you've said the wheat grows on the land great quite a few people know that that's brilliant okay and then we've got wow okay that's brilliant now i've got loads of people coming in there fantastic so let's have a look Okay, so I've got some examples here of how, what goes into producing this loaf of bread. Wow. Okay, so lots of you are right there. Land, we've got to grow the wheat, haven't we? Then we need um, machinery like this combine harvester to um, harvest the, the wheat out of the field. Um, and that, that uh, combine harvester needs something, needs some energy to run on, so it probably needs fuel. And then once all the wheat's been collected in, it needs to be taken to be milled. So it's going to have to be transported probably in a lorry, which will need fuel as well for energy. Uh, and then once the, the wheat has been milled, which will, uh, milling, the milling process will also need some energy, probably electricity. Uh, then we've got to make the actual bread. So there'll be big bakeries um, using water with the flour that's been milled from the wheat to make bread. Then that bread's got to be cooked. So we've got the energy, the heat from the oven. So that'll probably need electricity. And then we've got the packaging that's all got to be made. So water, land and energy are really involved in all the food we have. And you might like to think about that during healthy eating weeks. So if you take, you could take a fruit or vegetable or another type of food and try and find out 
what land, water and energy would have been used to make that food. So you think about its journey from the farm to, to the fork, so from the very beginning to being eaten, what's happened to it, how is it, what's been used to make it. So you might think, well, we know that, but it doesn't matter. What does it matter how much water, land and energy we use? Well, it's quite important, really. So if you look there at um, the Earth, so this is the Earth, how it looks from space. And lots of you probably know that our planet is often called the blue planet. And the reason for this is because it looks so blue. And why does it look so blue? Does anybody know? Why does it look so blue? If you're looking, people look at our planet from space. Why does it look so blue? Water, quite right. Well done, Stanhope Primary, very fast oceans, the oceans, water, fantastic. Yes, so much water. So most of our planet is water, but it's seawater. And we can't use seawater. We can't, we can't, can't drink it and we can't grow plants with it because <clears throat> it's, it's salty, isn't it? And actually what's very interesting is the water, the fresh water that we can actually use, and that's got to be for us to drink, to make our food, for washing, um, all sorts of things, is actually only around 1% of the water on our planet is water we can use and we can get to. Um, so some of our water is, is frozen in glaciers and things like that. So we've got less, we've got access to less than 1% of water. So we've got to look after that water, haven't we? So our fresh water is limited. We've got to look after it. What about our land? Again, on the, on our, on the, um, on the world there, we can see in the corner of the globe. Um, it looks like there's plenty of land, doesn't it? But not all land is good for growing or rearing animals or growing our crops. So you can see here, I've got a picture of a desert. So we know that's going to be very dry and hot, but also the sand um, is not a good place for, for plants to grow unless you're a special plant like a cactus and you're used to it. But the, the sand blows around and moves so the plants can't get their roots down. I say it's very hot and dry, so we can't just grow and, re and, and, and rear our, our animals and grow our crops anywhere. Land is limited. And then, of course, we need energy as well um, to transport our food in vehicles um, and for all sorts of things. And we know that um, our, some of the ways our energy is made can create greenhouse gases which warm up the planet. So really what we need to do, we need to really look after the water, land and energy uh, that we have on our planet um, so that we, we use it properly and it's not wasted. So what we've done this week, this week is healthy eating week. So we thought, well, how can we help people to eat better for themselves and the planet? Because we can't all we can't find out exactly how much land and water um, and energy used for every single thing we eat, can we? It's really, really hard. So we need some general rules we can follow to help. So these are our themes for healthy eating week. So we're going to have focus on fiber, get at least five a day vary your protein, stay hydrated and reduce food waste. And by doing these things, if we all do them, we can actually really help look after our planet. So let's have a closer look. Right, fiber, why do we need fiber? Does anybody know why do we need fiber? Can you tell me in the chat box? While you're doing that, I'm gonna stay hydrated and have a little sip of my tap water. Well done. So someone said we need fibre for the digestive system to help us go to the toilet. That's correct. Well done. Right. Let's have a look. Here we go to keep our digestive system healthy. OK, so we need yet yeah, food needs to travel through the body and our body needs to get rid of the waste that we don't want anymore. So to keep all that working properly, we need fibre. Where does it come from? Maybe know where fibre comes from. Hmm. Tricky. What foods? would give us fibre, oh, bananas, bread, cereals, fruit, vegetables, great. Right, let's take a look. So whole grain foods, so foods that use the whole of a grain, like whole, uh, whole grain breakfast cereals or wholemeal bread or whole wheat pasta, all these foods are great at giving us um, fibre. So is, you can see some baked potatoes, some raw potatoes in the background on that picture, mm -hmm. and they've got skins on. So if we eat the skins of potatoes, like with a jacket potato or a new potato, that's really good for giving us fibre as well. And then we've got 
fruit and vegetables. Lots of you said this already, brilliant. And these things called pulses, which are beans, peas and lentils. And not the green peas that we, we usually think of when we think of peas, but things like chickpeas and split peas. So those some yellow split peas in that picture there and some chickpeas sort of on the far right hand side. So we do some of these pulses as well. So let's have a quick look. At, well, we'll try and find the fibre. OK, so I've got two two dishes there, a sandwich and a potato. Can anybody tell me where I would find the fiber in those dishes? And you can look at the pictures on the left where the foods that provide fiber to help remind you where that might be. Right, well done Hazel class, you were fast. Great, bread and potatoes, sandwich, bread, skin on the potato, bread, excellent. Some really fast classes here that really know their food in the brown bread, brilliant. Okay, so let's just check. Yes, the wholemeal bread, the tomato and the lettuce, because they're providing fiber, aren't they? They're, fruit, they're vegetables. And uh, we've got our potato there as well, so the skin on it and the beans. Now, has anybody in your class, if anybody's looked at that jacket potato with the cheese and beans on and now feels like they want to have that for their lunch, can you put your hand up and show your teacher? because I'm one of those people, if I see, see a jacket potato like that, always makes me want to have it. You can imagine the lovely crunchy skin on that, can't you? And the nice beans. Okay, well done. Right, okay, so we move on. So the Eat Well Guide, this is our health eating model in the UK, isn't it? And we know that, um, and it tells us how to eat healthily. So I thought it'd be interesting just to look at it for a second and think about where's the fiber on the Eat Well Guide? Well, we can look, we can see our fruit and vegetables. That's a really big group, isn't it? So lots of what we eat should be fruit and vegetables. Then we can see our starchy foods in yellow and lots of those, uh, we need to eat lots of those as well. And that's where our whole grain foods can be found and, and the, the skins and our potatoes. And then we've got another group at the bottom that provides some fiber too. So some of the foods in the, in the protein group, that's the pink one, some of those foods provide fiber too. So that's where our beans and lentils and peas live. So we've also got meat and chicken and eggs in there, but it's the foods that come from plants that give us the fiber. Okay, so the Eat Well Guide is telling us, it's saying, come on everybody, look, look how much fiber you should have. Look how much, how many of the foods on this uh, plate provide fiber. So plenty of fiber is what we all need. Right, uh, we're gonna move on now to look at our next challenge and that get at least five a day. So why do we need fruit and vegetables? I think you probably know this. So I'm gonna just jump straight on. So we need vitamins, minerals, well done. People are so fast here. Miss Thompson. What is our teachers doing the typing or is this some really fast pupil typers? Well done. Lots of you got the vitamins and minerals. That's brilliant. And of course, our old friend, the fibre. Remember from the other slide. Right. And how much do we need? How much do we need? Fibre. Ooh. Five, sorry, five a day, lots. Yes, we do, we need lots a day. Okay, well, we need, lots of you saying the answer there, at least five portions a day. Okay, at least five, so five or more. And did you know, actually, children, some of our, some of our information, our research tells us that actually children, only about one in 10 children have five or more portions a day. So if you imagine, if you say, for example, you had 30 children in your class, only three of those children would be having at least five a day so it's quite hard to get five a day if we, if we, we need to concentrate it to make sure that we do we do get them quite a lot of people are quite good at having maybe three but we need to try and have five and a portion is about what fits into the palm of your hand okay so if, it, if it's about the amount that would fit in the palm of your hand that's one of your portions and you need five a day right protein why do we need protein protein this challenge is vary your protein, be more creative. Hmm. Let's have a look. To make a strong 4K, well done. That is good. Strong bone, stand thought, well done. Miss Howie there, get stronger. Well done. Lots of people know this one, right? It helps muscles and bones to grow. And that's really important, isn't it? Particularly 
when you're in primary school, you, you're still growing up into being an adult and your bones and muscles need to grow. So you, you need protein foods and what foods provide protein. Let's have a look. Well, our Eat Well guide helps us to know that, doesn't it? Here's the protein group. And I think we mentioned it already. We can see here some of our uh, pulses like our lentils, beans, chickpeas, some fish, some eggs, some meat, uh, some nuts there as well. So these are the foods that help us um, get our protein. And we're encouraged to help look after ourselves and our planet. We're, we're encouraged to try to have more protein foods from plants. So these are our peas, beans and lentils again. And you can see they're really nice, aren't they? They're all colourful. I particularly like beans. I think they're really, really nice to look at. So those ones on the right hand side, they've almost got a marble pattern on them. So they're really lovely. Right, let's see what they're called. Maybe you could say it out loud. I'm going to start at the top left. Red kidney beans, black eyed beans, pinto beans, red lentils, chickpeas. So how many of these have you tried? Can you show on your hands to the rest of your class? How many of these have you had before? Because I, I have never had a pinto bean, actually. And I think that's going to be something I'm going to try this week because I think they just look lovely. And you might have had you might have had dal, red lentils are used to make dal. You might have had hummus. Chickpeas are used to make hummus. So there we go. Right. And also the thing about pulses like beans, lentils and peas is they help improve the soil as well when they're growing. Right, fill up from the tap. I think we all know we need at least, at least six to or about six to eight drinks a day and more if it's warm um, or we're being active. And this week, I was watching the weather last night. This week looks like it's going to actually be a really good week pretty much all across the UK. So, you know, fingers crossed it was saying by Friday things might be getting very hot. So it's really important this week to drink plenty and healthier drink choices. Let's have a look. Oh, water milk and a smaller a small amount of orange juice each day as well we can have but our main drink it's good to have our main drink as water because it keeps us hydrated and also helps look after our teeth because there aren't any any sugars in the water uh, we need to think about as well thinking about looking after our planet using some re recyclable drinks containers so this is anything that we can use again so those glasses that have got the drinks at the top they could be used again or a mug and I'm sure lots of you have water bottles in school because I know primary schools are really good at making sure their students have water bottles and drink plenty. So it's good to fill up from the tap. We use our reusable containers and then we don't have lots of packaging and waste um, afterwards. But sometimes we might need to buy a drink if we're out and about and we haven't, haven't bought our bottle with us because it's important to stay hydrated. So if you do that, look out for recyclable containers, look out for the recycling sign. Once you've used them, make sure they go somewhere where they're going to get recycled. OK, our last challenge now. So we'll just be a couple more minutes with our assembly. So what free foods do you think are wasted most often? Anyone tell me, what do you think? Someone said to you, which ones do you think get wasted most often? Fruit, fish. Any others? Because vegetables, water. Very good. Because did you know a third of all the food produced in the world, so not just in the UK, but around the world, a third of all the food um, goes to waste and that's that's really sad isn't it so it, it you know it might be wasted when it's being farmed it might be wasted by shops or restaurants by schools or by by us and everybody has wasted some food at some time um, but we've got to be more aware and try not to right some great answers coming up here let's have a look these three here so we've got the potatoes bread and milk these are the foods that are quite often or most often wasted OK, so thinking about why is it important to reduce food waste? Well, remember the land, the water, the energy we talked about before. If we waste the food, all those things it took to make the food are wasted too, aren't they? So we don't want that to happen. It's not very good. We want to save our planet's resources and look after them. And also, what about this? Money. So we're wasting, oh, if you pay and buy for our food and then we don't eat it, we're wasting money too. So it's really important 
to reduce our food waste. Now, some food waste does need to be in a food waste bin, but sometimes there's food that ends up in the food waste that shouldn't be there. So I'm going to go through these uh, six foods here and I've got my food waste bin on the left and my food waste and then what could have been saved on the right. So as I say, each one of these, I want you to point to the left if you think it should go in the food waste bin and the right if you think it could have been saved. OK, eggshells. Were you right? Yeah, food waste bin. They could not have been saved. We can't eat the eggshells, can we? Apple, should it be in the food? Well, apple with one bite gone. Should that be in the food waste? Point left if you think it's in the waste. Point right if you think it could have been saved. Could have been saved, couldn't it? Banana skin, did that one a bit quick, didn't I? That's that's wasted as well. What about this fish bone? Could we have saved that fish bone? Could we use that or should it go in the food waste? Left for the waste, right for the saved. The waste, of course. Sandwich. Could have been saved or should be in the food waste. Could have been saved. And last one, it's a few pieces of orange there. Could have been saved. OK, so we need to think about how we can waste less food. So as I said before, everyone's done it. You know, we're not perfect at some time, but we need to just be more aware and we need to think about it. What could we do we need to make sure perhaps that we don't take too much food when we know we're not going to eat it? Or perhaps if we've got something large that we might not be able to manage, perhaps as a way of sharing it with somebody. So just have a think this week about trying not to waste any food. OK, so just as we finish then. We, we've learned that different foods have different impacts on our planet, all right? They use different amounts of water and energy and land, but this can be really confusing. So we just need to think about what we can do and we can try this week and do the, uh, follow the five themes for healthy eating week, which will help us eat well for us and the planet. So eat well for you and the planet, have a great healthy eating week, and if you get chance, let us know what you're doing. Maybe ask your teachers to send a tweet of a piece of work you've done or something you're doing. Or you can even email us as well. I would love to receive some emails from you telling me what you've done this week. So you can email us at postbox at nutrition.org.uk. Right. Have a fabulous week, everybody. Bye.